All right. What other questions did you have? Any other comments? I know we're doing a little bit of tech support here in the uh, the chat. I mean, we can go on and just keep talking about our experiences. Hey, I am open. You know, it's open season. <laughs> Come on, you know. Oh, Let's oh, man. What we can do. So uh, this is one of those that just makes you roll your eyes. Um, right after we had recorded the panel, um, my boyfriend and I had left to go um, get something to eat, and we decided to go out to a brew pub near us, or a brewery near us. Um, and I don't think you could see in the video, but I was wearing a t-shirt that said Run DNS that looked like the old Run DMC style. And so I'm walking into this uh, this brewery, and there's this guy there, doesn't even look me in the eye, and he just kind of like, what's DNS? Seriously, dude? Like, <laughs> and if I had it more together, I would have like offered him maybe some assistance with Google or Wikipedia, and I just wasn't thinking that quickly, sadly. I was just kind of like, let me get in there before I roll my eyes out of my skull. Like, yeah, thanks. <laughs> Super ironic considering the panel we just recorded. I love when you, you wear your, your industry t-shirts from whatever, you know, con you've gone to or training or whatever. Um, right now I'm wearing a B-Sides one uh -uh. Um, in honor of Dragon Con. But I was wearing the SECCDC <laughs> one earlier today. Um, and they they get they look at you and go is that your boyfriend's shirt? <laughs> uh, I've definitely gotten that in the past. Um, uh, I used to wear a t-shirt uh, fairly often. In fact, I still have it. It looks like it's just completely ratty at this point, uh, but it says I am the IT guy, and mm -hmm. I, I think I wore that one out for a few years. It's just like pizza delivery. They always said the pizza guy. I was the pizza girl. <laughs> yeah, and you walk into some weird stuff doing that. So there's a interesting conversation on the side here um, talking about uh, transgender men transitioning to women. Um, and does anybody want to come on and, and actually talk about it, or you just want to leave that in chat? So this is next is actually something um, we talked about at the at a pre at an early seminar on on like salary negotiation for women and mm -hmm. there's an early study and the preliminary results are out um, and you know, there's some caveats because obviously it's not a huge population but in the right. transgender um, grouping when they transition what happens to the salary when you adjust for basically, you know, career, career field and experience. And it turns out that when you transition to female, the salary decreases. So trans, mm -hmm. so male transitioning to female, their salaries go down. Female transitioning to male, their salaries actually increase. Mm -hmm. So one of the theories is, oh, well, do they potentially have, is there a possibility that there are some skill sets that are learned or some behaviors early on in life that they bring with them when they transition to female. However, the implication is their salaries reduce. So what else is going on? Um, and again, they, there's not enough, it's, it's not like there's enough of this huge population. So we can't necessarily say, you know, technically, you know, a trans woman is a woman is a woman, right? right. So, you know, saying that they went from male to female is kind of tricky. Um, but it is interesting in the perception of society that those salary discrepancy is still present. Mm -hmm. So it's not just us having to behave differently. There is some kind of penalty there. And it is I think I had heard something similar to that. For transgender of color. Oh, so oh yeah, good that, point. That just makes you just know get so frustrated with, I don't know where they're, you, you put it on corporate America or society in general, you know, it, 
it shouldn't be that way. Mm -hmm. um, you know, everyone does the same kind of work, may have different uh, sources of education or different levels, and that can affect, you know, your, your salary or your experience, you know, your experience may, but in no way, shape or form should it be gender based, religion based, racially based, you know, and mm -hmm. I'm wondering when the, you know, I'm not, you know, I, I was about to say this country catches up, but it's more than just this country. Um, yeah, they're having a huge problem uh, in the UK um, uh, as well for people who have come out against uh, transgender. Uh, I think I had heard a lot of that anecdotally. I'm sorry for interrupting you earlier. I didn't mean to. Um, but I, I had heard some of that just from, from anecdotes of people reporting what their career was like after they had transitioned or if they had gone to um, if they were at a job transition and then left to go to a new job where they didn't know the history. Yes. Um, there is, there was definitely In the study, a study. It was consistent when they went to a new job where they did not know the trans history, mm -hmm. which was interesting. And they, they did bring up that, um, like in the United States, there are some areas now where you're not allowed to ask for previous salary. And right. that has come to correlate when you ask for previous salary, if that salary is already artificially low because you're a woman or you're black, mm -hmm. simply having that information continues to perpetuate those, you know, that discrepancy from the beginning. So it, it that may be relevant as well. But they did um, pull out data on um, individuals who left their job where there is no history of what their previous sex was. So they, they, um, they were able to then pull that data out, which is kind of interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the two things that I would love to see removed from applications, uh, one is previous salary, and the mm -hmm. other is check the box if you have been convicted of a crime. Like, if you've served your time and you're out, you need to be able to go on and rejoin society and get your job. Um, I, I, oh, sorry. Oh, my God, that. yes. Uh, it's it's just one of those things that I'm like seriously because I've I've known quite a few people who have been incarcerated um, and they have had just an absolute horrendous time getting a job because they have to check the box that said yes I've been incarcerated um, you know here's the situation and people automatically just you know write them off because they have to check that box and if you don't check it you know, you're on the hook for uh, penalties for lying on your application and you could be fired and uh, plus it also leaves you open to if somebody finds out who doesn't like you or God forbid once is petty and brings it up, which has definitely happened. You can see some really petty stuff in corporate America. You would think we'd all be grown ups, but we're not. So well, I just, you know, I went from making, um, God, I was so underpaid at that company, um, 65,000 as a CISSP, just, just like stuns you um, yeah. to, you know, 98,000 when I took the contract and, you know, I'm still seeing, you know, fill out our application and tell us what you made. And I'm like, mm -hmm. why don't you go and look what the value of a CISSP is because I was still underpaid when I went to 98. Oh yeah. Um, there's an interesting conversation Amanda just said in chat talking about unpaid domestic labor is a huge aspect of the economy. Um, man, is that ever true? I don't think we ever have counted, you know, domestic labor as, as important or, even something consider it as something worthy of, of being counted. I mean, all of this stuff happens magically. It's what do you mean you have to work at it? Like, and again, women just bear the brunt of it, um, which uh, what we talked about earlier has an impact on career because you don't have the free time uh, after work or you don't have the middle bandwidth after work to continue on these other uh, other projects. 
Yeah, I, I can't tell you how many times I've come home and I'm like, you know, I really need to like work on um, taking this course on GDPR and finishing up. I mean, literally, I've got probably 20% left to go on GDPR and mm -hmm. I've been sitting for months because I'm just tired, you know, and there's a test at the end of it. Am I going to have all this retained? No. It's can't imagine. Yeah, I I was working an incident and you know, when you're working an incident, it's like twenty to you know, twelve to twenty hour days and it's absolutely crazy. And uh, there was a bit of we're just gonna say our house looks lived in on a pretty regular basis. And I had gotten up one morning and I mean it was it looked like a bomb had gone off. I was so so pissed um, and that was kind of a unhappy conversation with my boyfriend at the time and I'm like I kicked him out of the house for um, about a week and a half until everything at least the the crazy hours had stopped like you can go live with your sister for a while because I literally could not cope with the job and the, the train wreck that was left out in the kitchen or wherever um, I'm sure he's not forgiven me for that yet. <laughs> I did eventually allow him back in the house under some rather stern words. Don't you love it yeah. when someone is a, you know, they, they work in their own home. They don't, they're not working outside like we are. And um, like I tried to hire this friend of mine to like come and clean my apartment. And, and she tells everyone that my, you know, my, my apartment's kind of, it's, it's messy. Okay. The, the floors have to be vacuumed. Um, okay. you know, but it's not like a bomb went off in it. Like, you know, like it, it's been cleaned, uh, it, at least once a month. And they, they report to someone else saying that your house is the nastiest thing they have, that they ever walked into. And you're like, that's not true, but I'm working. Uh. <laughs> Yeah, we're, we're a couple of clutter bugs, so stuff ends up all over the place, which is so much fun. Um, and usually the results, I have, thank you, Lord, a, a person who comes in and cleans every week. And let me tell you, I, I love this woman beyond all words. Um, and I, I will frequently do the run around and pick up everything and straighten everything before she gets here, uh, just because I don't want her to see how bad it gets <laughs> like, oh my god <laughs> and you can forget ever allowing my mother in this apartment she's banned from my home like no no mm -mm. my mom absolutely not climb the stairs to my apartment so i'm, I'm good she it's because you live up on the third floor i couldn't climb right? the stairs to your apartment holy cow hey i'm in the trees it's beautiful um so someone oh. asked um What's the rewarding aspect in InfoSec? My favorite thing that I've done, um, that I've, I've had a lot of fun with, has been doing uh, the red team, blue team. Uh, and for people who aren't aware of what that means, red team are the attackers. This is, you know, staged attacks. This is not real live fire. Um, stage attacks are doing penetration testing to see what they can get into and identify vulnerabilities within the network or the system. And then I usually do blue team, which is defense. So I either have to alert on it uh, or have it blocked to begin with. Um, and that's actually one of my favorite things to do because number one, it's a lot of fun. Uh, and it's it's harder than you would you would think because you do have to come up with attacks that work and there are a lot of things that are like well in theory this should work in practice it doesn't um, but also you know there's a lot of information that comes out of it so you also have to and a, a lot of times redesign how you set your alerts for your sim how you um, how you pay attention to uh, specific um, things that happen, like if you have specific logs in the firewall that you never thought of were an issue before. I've noticed informational alerts in the firewall um, actually can give you a pretty good idea if somebody's uh, not on the up and up 
um, and you have some kind of suspicious behavior, but they're just, you know, a lot of the time they're not set to even go to a sim or to be alerted on. Um, so that's, that's probably my favorite part of it. I'm going I'm to put my two cents in and then I'm going to ask a follow up question on that question and see what your thoughts are. Um, mm -hmm. I would say for me, the most rewarding um, aspect is when you know that you've done the best you can possibly do. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and, and, you, know you, you, you go home after all this and you're like, it is buttoned down. Thank God. Or I've found that <laughs> this about these people, you know. Mm -hmm. um, that is my most rewarding thing, but I would, I want to throw out a question because um, I'm not sure with our audience if they have this um, information, but if you want to experience or learn how to do the, the red team or the blue team, you know, doing, you know, pen testing, you know, uh, capture the flag type things, what do you recommend? for um, the best access to something like that. Like I know DC 404 has like a capture the flag, but- Yeah, DC 404, um, oh, there was a good, I, I'd have to go back and find the link. There are several good links about capture the flag and um, uh, in our hacking 101 last night. So I, I would have to go back and find the, the links, but there are definitely ones you can do online. Uh, a lot of the DC groups will help you set one up um, if you want to do one. If you have like a, you know, a work group or a, a school group that wants to do a capture of the flag, uh, they'll help you set it up. Um, man, I, I still, I got to plug blue team because there is nothing like, like catching the red team in the act. You're like, nope, caught you. Nope, caught you again. Nope, gotcha again. That is a wonderful feeling. And yes. the other good one is when you, when you're doing an official pen test that you have an outside company come in and you get them right at the very beginning and you're like, I ah, gotcha. That's always fun. I get a little competitive, I guess. Yeah. I was just thinking, you know, I don't, I'll try to dig up those links and see if I can't get them posted or we can, uh, I think some of them are posted in the, um, discord channel as well for EFF. So if you're on, on Discord, some of them are out there. Some people have that old imposter syndrome thing going on that when they, you know, want to look at doing something like capture the flag or something like that, you know, they go, well, I'm not sure I can actually do this. Yeah, but even if you don't have the experience and you're not like, you know, the, the God level player, just going through the motions and just going through it is, a, you know, it's a really good experience um, mm -hmm. because not only are you doing it yourself and you're learning from it, you know, you also see what the opposition is doing or you see what other capture the flag teams are doing. Um, and you're like, oh, that looks interesting. You know, maybe figure out what they, how they did, whatever it was they did and see if they can share information. It's a good, um, it's a good opportunity to share information, share what you know, learn from other groups, because most of them will, will share how they did something or how they did it or what they were, what tools they used. Um, so it's, it's a great opportunity for that. What else we got out there? Oh, come on. Did we put him to sleep? I hope not. No, um, but still, thank you so much for this, uh, <laughs> um, listening to this. I was just quietly listening, but this has been really um, interesting. My aunt, she um, works um, for at the high level, mm -hmm. and as you can imagine, working for a medical device company right now, she is... Hmm. Or she's like one level below the CEO for the medical department of and she also takes care of my grandmother and it's like I, I, I don't know how 
she does all of that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, um, that has yeah. got to be crazy stressful. Yeah. And, and, you know, again, with the, all of your talk about like the unpaid labor, I, I, I'm, I'm a teacher, but I don't mm -hmm. have any children. And I think teachers who have kids who are women, I'm just like, how do you do this? How do you do yeah. this? Job? My mother was a teacher. She taught for 36 years and I don't know how she did it. I have, I have, and man, I sound like a horrible person. Uh, now that I'm an adult, I have a lot more respect for my mother when I was, than, you know, and, and what she dealt with when I was growing up. Um, and at times, surprised I made it to adulthood. Because um, she used to tell me on a regular basis that you only get seven years for doing in your child. I'm like, thanks, Mom. Thank you. I know. <laughs> she said that a lot. The other thing is with the pandemic, you know, we're, we're not just seeing teachers, um, you know, either being in the classroom, um, God forbid, or working from home, but you also have the children home. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's been a huge thing for women since this pandemic started. Uh, and I mean, it's, it's a huge impact. Women are dropping out of, of careers because they're not able to, they're either the only people available to watch their children or they don't have somebody else who's really stepping up in the role or their kids are just totally mommy focused and you know what other, there's no other human in the house now. No, we don't acknowledge you. Um, and so they're having to quit their jobs or take like a, um, a demotion in order to, to do this. I, I can't imagine what it would be like um, yeah, to go through this um, pandemic with kids right now. That's got to be a nightmare. Yeah, uh, the same thing with my teacher friends who have kids and were trying to teach during the pandemic. Um, <laughs> it's insane. I mean, I feel very blessed where I work, we're remote, but I um, know people in my state where not only are they doing hybrid, but they're allowing 10-minute mask breaks indoors. Oh, for Pete's sake. Mm. Oh, God. I, I just, I, you know, I with the pandemic going on, you know, also having a pandemic economy where, con you know, companies are tightening their belts. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm noticing in the, the job market that um, I had a second interview for a job that had two positions open and 35 people um, in line to interview for the job. Um, and I'm, I'm curious to see what is going to happen over the next year, two years, five years, if we still have the pandemic mm -hmm. going. What is the industry going to look like, especially with women having to take on so much more of the brunt at home? Is it going to go back to an all-male field or predominantly male yeah. field? Or is it going to change where they wake up and they go oh this is going on i mean in in some ways it has been uh it's been helpful for like the disabled community you say you know they've been uh, asking for work from home for a while and now all of a sudden everybody's working from home um and i i think for a lot of people who uh have mobility issues or not able to leave their homes for whatever reason for long periods of time uh, you know, I think it's going to be a, a godsend for them because they could actually participate um, in, you know, fully in, in a career path. And But, yeah, it's, it's, it's a challenge. I mean, plus you have mental health issues with all of us being home. Not everybody handles being home well. I am not thrilled about working from home. Um, and I, I finally stopped asking when we're going back to the office. The answer has been like, we don't know. We're never going to know. We don't know. Crazy. Um, so I'm going to toss something out to our audience. What do y'all want to see covered if we do this again? Um, what do y'all want to see? What are some other topics you want to hear about? Um, at least in terms of information security, um, like 
for women at least dealing with like the whole like revenge porn thing? <laughs> oh, um, if you look up, I don't know if you're on Twitter. I love my Twitter. Uh, but if you look up badass Kate Bowen and her badass army, she has done so much work on revenge porn. It is awesome. Like she is totally. You toss that name in the chat. Didn't mean to interrupt. Yep. But oh no problem. Be helpful for folks. But yeah, she has done so much uh, with it, and that has been just her her. That's been her drive for a few, quite a few years now. Um, and I, I don't, I think she does have a site. I don't, haven't looked at it that much. I mainly follow her on Twitter because I'm addicted to Twitter. Um, but yeah, she's had some really interesting things. There have been some interesting things for not only revenge porn, uh, and people fighting against it, but also for uh, stalker wear, um, online harassment, uh, you know, things of that nature. There are, and it's again mostly women led because I think we're the ones that generally have to deal with it. Um, not that I'm saying that men don't get harassed or stalked, or I would assume revenge porn, I don't know. Um, but women primarily have been the targets uh, of all of these things. But yeah, that's something I, I'm totally on board with talking about because huge issue and will probably only get worse. Uh, what else? I guess the next thing is actually more of like a security thing for like young people on the internet, particularly with like software for student learners, especially in the elementary school. I often worry about the security of those programs and the developmental appropriateness of those programs. Of those programs. Uh, talk about stalkerware. Um, and we're seeing a lot of, of school applications that you pretty much sign over any privacy rights you have. Um, and I have, I would have to look up the links to it because um, I don't have them, <laughs> I, I don't have it handy right now. Uh, but there have been a couple people really talking about that issue, uh, especially recently with everybody being home and doing online learning. It's it's definitely a huge issue. Um, I have to admit, I mean, the Zoom calls for in classrooms make me a little nervous, number one, because that's a huge opportunity to have people, how do I put this, people in your home that you normally would not invite, and they may misinterpret things they see in your home. Um, and... You know, again, I think uh, families, you know, women of color probably have a greater, um, greater eye upon them, you know, in judging the, the, the fitness, and I use that, you know, in the loosest terms possible, uh, of their home. Um, I mean, the, it's, it's absolutely insane. But yeah, um, Technology, children, technology, definitely another huge issue. Yeah, I, I, I definitely I'm agree Zoom. with uh, the whole judgment. I work in a um, predominantly low-income, uh, high-language, mm -hmm. English-language learner district. And, man, sometimes what people say about those parents, it's, like, bone-chilling. Yep. And I'm like, oh, yeah. you don't understand the culture of trauma. Like, stop it. Just let it go. Um, and I've, I've had several friends of mine who, you know, in the past, they've, they've held non-traditional jobs. Um, some of them have, you know, worked in clubs, worked in, worked as adult entertainers. They've worked, you know, in strip clubs, stuff like that. And, yeah, they definitely, because of their, their, their role, um, they are definitely very aware of how they're viewed and how they're treated and how... Uh, easy it is to end up on the wrong side of like a CPS report. It's, you know, it's absolutely insane. And it's all just judgmental assholeness, if you want my honest opinion. Um, okay, so talk about how much InfoSec has changed during the pandemic. Man, that has been huge. 
because we're, I mean, I, at my company, we have had, we had to kind of redesign how we, um, how, how we did connections. We had to um, expand out our, our VPN connection. Uh, and then we realized that, yeah, I mean, having everybody funneled through one particular point, you know, we really had to focus more of our attention on that, that one point. Um, uh, the other issue is people are bringing home equipment they did not, they've never bought home before. Uh, we've had some incidents with people doing naughty stuff on their work machines. Um, hmm. Let me tell you how much porn I've seen. It's, it's awesome. It's like, guys, that's, can you all not pick something what, interesting to look at? That's one of the first things I remember saying when I got out of school was, I don't care if you have porn on your machine. I know you do. Oh, yeah. I've 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 seen some URLs that I'm like you better be glad I'm the one looking at this and I know what you're looking at otherwise you would be having answering some very uncomfortable questions with the police right about now um, but I mean a lot of people that have gone home to work they've not worked from home before they may not have um, enough of a powerful computer uh, as the one they're taking home from work. Um, hell, they may not even have internet. Uh, or they may have had a very low speed internet instead of like a, a high speed bandwidth that they need. So, I mean, there, there are a lot of issues uh, that we've run into that we've had to rethink how we do stuff with uh, uh, after COVID and the coronavirus. So, awesome question. Yeah, we'll definitely cover that one. All right. I, I see some um, issues coming up in the future from the GRC side. And, oh, yeah. you know, you have, it's in, in lots and lots of regulated industries. You know, I think it was Nat that said that they were, uh, she was working in medical. Uh, mm -hmm. I hope that's right. Um, you know, when, when I work for the, the insurance company that will remain nameless. You know, um, they're highly, highly regulated, right? Mm -hmm. um, and their audits happen once a year. And there are certain things in the cadence with governance, risk, and compliance that every three months, every six months, every year, you know, you've got to stay on top of this stuff. And companies are not spending the amount of money that they should be in information security yes. right now. Yep. So we're, you... I, I anticipate an uptake of, you know, um, hacks against companies. We're going to have a lot of ransom. We're going to have a lot, a lot, lot, lot of compromised yep. things. We're, we're going to see more breaches than, than you've ever seen. Um, and I'm oh, sure Lord. they're going to just not aware of as many um, mm -hmm. because they're not putting the money where they need to. I know. Or the, so yeah, they don't realize. Feel. The gaps that are now opened. Oh yeah, no, we're and we're already starting to see that too. I mean, we're already seeing more breaches. We're already seeing more ransomware pop up. Um, you know, unfortunately, the, the 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 bad guys haven't taken time off. I'm like, don't y'all take a break? Don't you know there's a pandemic on? Do you give us a break, please? Um, oh yeah, I love it when they're creative. That's awesome. Uh, so we are about to time. We need to start wrapping up. Does anybody have any last minute questions? Anything else they want to put on there? Obviously, again, we'll all be on Discord. Um, if you have think of anything there. Um, I don't know, but uh, we'll 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 see. All right. Anything else? Last minute? Thank you for your time. I really appreciate it. <laughs> You're welcome. You're very welcome. All right. Well, thank you for coming to our panel. I think we had a good time putting it together and glad that people seem to enjoy it. Yeah, hopefully we'll see everybody in person in 2021. I am absolutely ready. So cool. Well, y'all have a good night. Thanks, guys. Bye.